Hi guys, School here, and this is Anno 2205. This is a futuristic strategy city builder game uh, from Ubisoft, which is coming out November this year, early November this year, 3rd of November, I think. Uh, this is not a cutscene, this is actual live footage. This is what the game really does look like, and the first thing that you can see is it's beautiful. I mean, like, seriously, look at that. So what is this game about? Well, I'm going to kind of show you some footage from the game that I was while I was playing it and talk about what the game is and what it should turn out to be. So first things first, you get a cutscene intro. Wide meadows and towering mountains. And soon you will add an impressive skyline to the picture. I'm glad you accepted my invitation. Samantha Beaumont, Global Union Supervisor of the Lunar Licensing Program. First things first, though. The protocol demands you bring a spaceport into operation here. The spaceport building site off the coast is still unstaffed. But as soon as you've built the necessary housing, your construction team will be moving in. So you own the corporation and the, the way this game works is you basically have to build accommodation first to start to attract a population. Uh, when the people start to move in, they have needs. You need to fulfill those needs in order to progress the society. Once you do that, then that leads to more advanced needs and so on. Along the way, you need to manage your resources, manage your electricity, manage your transportation, and produce the goods and collect raw resources from the world around you. Uh, so for example, you need to go to the sea to build salination plants to collect, uh, to refine into water that your society can drink. You need to go and build mining shafts in the cobalt mines in order to extract cobalt minerals to build other things and so on. So this is your spaceport, this is where you begin. Uh, at the moment, you're in a kind of a scenario based where you're given specific missions. Now, it's going to guide you through these missions. Uh, as you can see, it says work in progress. We've got to get 50 workers attracted. We've got to build a rice farm. We've got to build a sunflower farm. And we need to build a biopolymer factory. At the top there, you'll see your credits. Uh, you'll also see how many people you have. You have zero and you have 30 biopolymers. Biopolymers are the unit that you use to construct things. Uh, you've got 30 to begin with, which will allow you to construct some basic structures, but you are going to have to build uh, ref uh, sunflower farms in and then a factory in order to convert the sunflower into biopolymers. Otherwise, you're going to run out of stuff to build with. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build some apartments, some accommodation for our workers to move into or our people to move into. And you can do this by clicking on the build tool and then just dragging out the space that you want. Uh, you can build as many as you like, but you can only build up to the amount of... It will only construct up to the amount of biopolymers that you have available to build with. Now, having done that, you need to connect the whole thing with roads. Each tile, each unit that you build, each structure, must be connected to at least one road unit. You don't have to go all down the side of it, you just need to go in one piece. However, here, I've just gone all down the side, just so that we can build further that way later. You can move units just by clicking on them and then clicking move. So you, there's no there's no kind of sense of once you put something down, you can't move it. You absolutely can. Some structures can only be placed in certain areas. For example, you'll see later when you build a mine, it will only go on designated mining areas. At the top of the screen there, you can see one for a salination plant. And we're going to build a salination plant pretty soon. If you zoom in here, you get an idea of the detail that's going on. Now you can see cars and people moving around. This is pure cosmetic. Uh, the cars don't actually create a traffic problem as such. Didn't expect the management to show up. Please, come in. <laughs> Scouse worker there. Um, if, you, if you've if you ever played City Skylines, for example, you have to manage the traffic. Traffic can become an issue. No such thing in this game. Uh, the traffic is just artwork. Now, you can see in this worker, he has needs. He has water, organic food, and information. Information we're going to do later by building an information station. Uh, water, we're going to have to build a salination plant in order to extract water. First, let's build a rice farm. That's going to produce food for our workers. We do have some food at the moment, but we are going to run out unless we produce more. And we shall put it over here in the corner, out of the way, and we'll connect to it in a second. 
Organic food is perceived as needless luxury by many megacorps. Good to see you share the union's perspective. Now she will basically guide you and also comment on the things you are doing. If your society has certain needs, she will let you know. If you don't have enough energy for your requirements, uh, for what for the demand, she will also let you know. So it, it does steer you in the right way during the game. So now we're going to build some sunflower farms. These are going to provide uh, the sunflower, which will convert into biopolymer. So I'm just going to build them like this, and then I'll connect them down the side with the road tile. Again, I just need to make sure that one square is connected to that second one there, and then they're both linked in. They're now busy producing biopolymers, uh, sorry, sunflower, and we're going to build a biopolymer factory right next to it to convert the sunflower into biopolymer. Great. Building material shortages shouldn't be an issue anymore. Top of the screen, you should start to see our biopolymer count starting to rise steadily. Uh, you'll also notice down the bottom there, we've got some negatives. We've got insufficient energy. Uh, we've also got an insufficient workforce. Basically, we don't have enough people and we're not producing enough power. So in order to produce more power, we need to build these sort of wind farms. Now, you'll notice they have a circle around them. Uh, the circle is uh, a proximity. And if you build another wind farm within, within and the circles overlap, then each of them will reduce in um, productivity, uh, in output, effectively. So they need to be not touching. You know, you need to build these things and space them out. See? It's working now. There you go. So we just connected that in, and now we've solved the energy problem. Next thing we need to do is tackle the worker problem. We're going to need more people, which means we're going to need to build quite a few of these apartment blocks. Now, we will be able to, to uh, upgrade these in a little while, and I'll show you that. And that will make them into high-density ones. But currently, we're going to have to stick with the low density. We need to fulfill all the society's needs in order to get them leveled up. You can see our population starting to rise now. Your there you go. construction crew is one of the first ready. Keep up the pace. Your competitors will try to catch up. For the next construction stage, you'll need qualified ground staff to operate the spaceport. Make sure to adhere to union standards while providing the required infrastructure. Okay, so let's have a look at the worker needs. You can see that on water and information. We need to sort those two things out so that we can level up these buildings. But we've now completed the first mission, and that's unlocked a few bits and pieces, which we'll go through in a second. First things first, desalination plants. We need to sort out the water problem. This is the only way to extract water from the planet. So let's go ahead and build one of those. Now you can see there's only a specific place that we can put it. They're dotted around the coastline. But again, we still have to connect the whole thing with roads. We don't need to connect any power lines, any any water pipes or anything like that if you're used to uh, SimCity or City Skylines. We just go in with roads. You need this desalination plant. These days, it's the only way to come by drinkable water. See? It's working now. There we go. So the desalination plant is now working. Interesting thing is, uh, these things are expensive to build, like most units in the game, like the mines and stuff. However, they are upgradable, and it is a lot cheaper to upgrade than it is to build a new one. So later on, you can upgrade these things so they can have three of those turnstiles, I think is the maximum. And that will obviously uh, triple the output capacity of the, set of the clean water. So you can still see that we've got a massive shortage. We need to attract a population of 250. We're currently on 166. So, time to build a few more of these things. We also need to build an infodrome. That is the, that's going to give us the, the society a way of gathering information. That's one of their needs. That's how they kind of communicate, learn, get better and improve. So it's a very important building early on. Okay, so we attracted 250 workers. We've done that, which basically means we've just upgraded some more stuff. Now let's build the infodrome. This is quite a big structure and we should just be able to fit it in over here somewhere. You can see uh, it has a kind of a radius of influence around it. You can see the blue color getting slightly lighter the further away it goes on the road network. If I build it here, it will be able to influence quite a large radius around it. A broad range of information services. This will enable your employees to develop their interests as well as their skills. 
Right, so, worker needs water, organic food, information, all satisfied. You notice there's now an arrow appeared over these things. We can upgrade these buildings. To do that, we click on the upgrade and we can select one or drag out an area to upgrade many. Uh, this does require biopolymers to do it. We haven't got enough polymers to upgrade everything. Ah, I knew there was something going on here. Nick Papadakis, Papadakis Enterprises. You want a good deal? Just come to my warehouse. All systems online. Can't wait to get started. Remarkable progress. Look at that. We've assembled construction crews and ground personnel faster than I was expecting. You are more than ready for the first major hurdle. So they've been upgraded. They now look pretty the cool. The program demands you connect your city with the Global Union Space Station via a space elevator. So far, only megacorps like the Big Five use such technology. But I'm sure you have the same potential. You'll also notice that advanced needs have now been unlocked. Vitamin drinks and so on and so forth. Uh, Nick Papadopoulos is another corporation on, on, the, uh, on the Earth. And you can trade with them and uh, exchange goods. Could be raw materials, could be full production goods. It's a way of um, buying things that you don't have. You can also specialise your cities and trade uh, materials and goods with other cities that you have. So you can, in fact, specialise... Uh, each city that you have and just trade the things that you need in other cities now let's have a look around you can see a cobalt mine has now appeared uh, if we click on this and you notice there's a section here that we can put it on that will erect a cobalt mine your facilities are consuming more energy than you are providing this reduces their productivity Sam quick to jump in there and inform us but we've connected that and you can see we've now got an even bigger deficit but let's build some more stuff and then we'll sort out the energy problem a feldspar quarry there you go that will uh, produce different kinds of minerals which we're going to need later connect it in with the road watch the energy at the bottom so there's the circles, it immediately shows you the wind park circles and that is the overlap. You can see you get a, uh, a negative effect on them if you build them within concentric radius of each other. So I'm just going to build some out of the way. So we're going to need another one, that didn't quite sort out the uh, energy problem. It doesn't actually matter if you build them right Very next good. to society. Should standardize the process. They don't produce any noise, there's no pollution to manage in this game, unlike say Skylines. So you can build wind parks right next to somebody's house and they don't care. So here I'm building a robot assembly hall, just connects good. us to the road. You've gathered the components needed for the elevator. Only the elevator cable requires special materials you can't produce, but I arranged for a delivery. So this assembly plant basically builds robot units. These are advanced constructors that you need to build the more advanced buildings in the game. You can see them being manufactured there. Absolutely love the detail. So now I'm going to build some worker complex areas. Uh, you can kind of consider these to be office space. If those things back there are apartments where, where your residents live, then this is like the office complex. This is where they go to work and be effective and productive. Right, let's promote some more of these buildings in order to increase the population. You can see one of our objectives there is to uh, increase population by quite a lot, up to 750. So one of the objectives here is to produce vitamin drinks. Vitamin drinks are a corporate benefit in a way. They make your corporation more attractive by keeping your workers healthy. So it's a bit like feeding them fresh fruit and vegetables. That makes them want to come and work for your corporation. A clever move seen to your staff's good health. Benefits like that make you a more attractive employer. There you go, so we built the uh the fruit farms, if you like, and then we built the factory to make the vitamin drinks. Company trademarks grow in popularity. And notice down here we have a, a, a transporter network problem. Your technicians are ready. Start the elevator construction once all other requirements are met. My associate, John Rafferty, is already heading here with the special material deliveries. So, although you don't have to manage the transportation, you do have to make sure that you've got enough to transport the goods around. And what I just did there was effectively go build a logistics warehouse. We which... are the forerunner when it comes to technology. 
I think you're smart enough to see that. Thank you. Which provides you with more transportation, more trucks, if you like, on the road to move things around. Now, we're pretty much all set now to produce a space elevator. Unfortunately, in this preview build, once you build a space elevator, um, that en ends the demo, if you like. That's as far as we can go. So, we've done everything that we need to do in order to build a space elevator. So, now let's just go and look around the rest of the island a little bit, and I'll show you some more of the structures, and you can see some more of the detail. Your facilities. You can see down the bottom right there is the map, and you can see that we're on a very small island. In order to connect to the different islands, you build bridges, but they on only unlock once you get to a certain tech level. This is another island. This is where uh, Nick, Papa, whatever his name was, Papadopoulos, he's currently on this island over here, and you can see he's, he's expanding in a different way. In business, my friend, you're either a fish or a shark, and we all know that fish are nearly extinct. Ah, yes, but what happened to the sharks, Nick? If we have a quick look around the island, you can get a feel for the biome, if you like. You can see mountains, you can see trees, greenery, snow, ice, water, that kind of thing. The other place that you can visit is the moon. You can go and colonize the moon. And that has a very different style, but we weren't able to look at it in this particular preview build. But it does have bunker-like buildings, it has low gravity, it has uh, unique things to it, such as shield generators, uh, which you need to use to provide residents with protection from meteor impacts and cosmic rays. You also make hydroponic plants, uh, and you can mine minerals like helium-3, which are used to power fusion reactors. Basically, the moon has energy and the Earth needs it. This is a, a bridge. This is what you can use to connect to the next island once it allows you to build this bridge. You can then expand uh, over onto the other main island there, which has all the mountains in it. This is one of the buildings we've promoted. This is one of the office complexes and complex O2. But you can see workers walking around. You can see the detail levels are very, very high. The graphics are lush and gorgeous. You can spin full 360. It's not isometric in any way, so you can spin the camera around and just look at any of the structures that you've made. You can look at your city from a different angle. This is the spaceport where we started off. And you can see there's, you know, from aliens like robots walking around, two-legged robots moving things about. Workers, uh, trucks, just everything going on. It's fantastic. You can see the packages being extracted. You can see the machine going up and down the coalface. Um, just, just great. I love it. It's fantastic. That's a high-res look at the infodrome. You can see it's got the, uh, the weather and temperature on there. Have a nice day. Just, you know, lovely. I mean, just to, just to even graphics like that on top of the graphics just looks fantastic. But sadly, that's as much as I can show you in this preview build. We're going to click on the spaceport now and start the upgrade, and then we're going to see the outro video. Please click like if you enjoyed that, and don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you think.